up nerds welcome to the nerdy narrative my name is leslie smith and i'm here today to talk about all of the things that i've read over the last week here is hoping that something in this pile appeals to your taste as a reader and maybe you'll find something to add to your tbr in the future let's start with all of my completed reads and the first one in this pile is Boo Ludlow's The Failed Technomancer. This is the first book in the Robot Cannibal Apocalypse. You heard me right. I said Robot Cannibals. This book takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting after these robots were mass produced, these flesh eating, man eating robots, those that are still surviving do so in small settlements to try and avoid detection by these robots, which are called rose. Each settlement has what is known as a guardian technomancer. A technomancer is someone who as a child is discovered to have a specific gene that is able to allow them to train their minds to manipulate or control technology, which means they are extremely important in detecting or deterring Rosies from the human settlement. The failed Technomancer is about 64-bit. He is an acolyte of the Guardian Technomancer of the human settlement called Fort. 64-bit has a huge secret. He's never been able to use his mind to control technology. There is an accident that occurs that renders the Guardian Technomancer in a comatose state. The timing of this accident could not be worse because while 64-bit and the other acolyte Cortex are trying to provide medical assistance to their master, scouts show up at the front door requesting the immediate aid of the Guardian Technomancer because they have located a Rosie, which reveals the possibility that there are others in the vicinity. The failed Technomancer blends beautifully my three top favorite genres science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And when I first started reading it, I thought it might would be suitable for younger readers, but as I kept going, I thought, oh no, 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 no. When the characters do encounter Rosie's in the novel, it is very violent, very gory, and I loved it. It's the story of 64-bit as he is trying to find his purpose. He always thought he was supposed to be a technomancer, but since he's unable to do the most vital function of a technomancer, he's adrift. What could he possibly be useful for? So it's the story of his search for identity, for purpose, but he's not even the best character in this book. In my opinion, I love so many of the other characters. I can't wait to continue the series. This one is also available on audiobook. I picked it up in the recent sitewide sale Audible had. It's narrated by the author himself, who did a fantastic job. Really love listening to him bring life to his own story. So this was a great book. I gave it four stars. I will link my full written review in the description below. The review is completely spoiler free. All of my reviews are always spoiler free because my intent with that review is to express my thoughts, feelings, and emotions while reading the book and giving you just enough information that you can determine if that book is one you want to pick up or not. That's all I want to do so it is safe for you to read, no spoilers. And while you're down there in the description box looking at the review for The Failed Technomancer, while we're talking about science fiction, author James James Flynn, who I've covered a lot on this channel, has written the first book in a new trilogy. It's a mystery that is set in space. The first book is called Exodus of Evil. It's coming out January 31st. He's put together a pre-publication leaflet that is free for you to download onto your Kindle. It gives you a little bit of history about the book. It provides detailed character profiles. There's even a couple of character interviews included, maps, and so much more. This book, this series appeals to me because one of my favorite movies of all time is Event Horizon. The ship that's floating around in outer space that's possessed or haunted. I don't know what you want to call it, but this has that feel to it. It's about this huge generation ship called the Conservation. It's been traveling for 29 years towards its destination. It contains everything on this ship to go to this particular planet where they're hoping to create another habitable planet like Earth. 
and suddenly the communication is cut off. So if you're interested in reading more about this upcoming novel, I will have a link to that leaflet in the description box below, but I am very excited. I'm desperately hoping to get my January TBR knocked out quick, fast, and in a hurry so that I can squeeze this one in and review it for you before it goes live on the 31st. All right, jumping back over to completed reads. I did finish Reign of Demons, which is the third and final book in the War of Last Day trilogy by Kareem Solomon. It was a strong conclusion to this series. I didn't want the series to end. Y'all know I hate saying goodbye, but my gosh, it was so good. Completely unexpected. Never in a million years would I have ever thought it was going to end in the way that it did, but it was so good. Would I have chosen that ending? No. But do I love the ending? Yes. It is a solid series. Very satisfying, action-packed, fast-paced, great plot. It's about a people, the Koyans. They have decided that they want to take over the continent of Garania. That was their former homeland. They feel like they deserve it. And they don't want to just take it over and colonize those that have settled there. They want to wipe them out utterly annihilated, removed like they were never there. And in order to do this, they have tricked another race of people called the Agonians. And these Agonians have these demons that have been placed inside them. And if you hurt one of the Agonians or you kill them, the demon resurrects that body. And as they gain more and more control over their host, they eventually take their true demonic form. It's an immortal army. How can the humans fight this? And oh, it's so good. The magic system's so good. Over the entire trilogy, there is character growth and development. The magic system expands and learns as the people wielding it learn more about it and themselves. And it's so good. It's so good. I cannot recommend it enough. If you love dark fantasy, you will love this series. Those are the only two books that I completed this week. That brings us to the largest segment of this video, which are my current reads. I'm still working my way through A Mini Tale. This is a web serial I'm reading online. You can read it for free at aminitale.com. Of course, it's gonna be linked in the description box below. This is about a mouseling named Opaline who is a world walker. World walkers are cursed beings who blip from universe to universe through time and space. They have zero control over when or where that they go. But Opaline, the character that we follow, was given a little spinning top. And based on the amount of rotations it completes before it falls over, gives him an indication of if he's gonna be there a short time or a longer time. He strives to find a purpose at each place that he visits. My other web serial is Archendrathist, which I'm reading on Royal Road. Again, another one that's free to read. I love this one. I'm gonna be so sad when it's over. This series has become my daily joy. I read a chapter or two of it every single day. This is the story of Eric Flat and his daughter Jane, though we primarily are focused on Eric. I relate to him so much. Eric and Jane get on the wrong side of a being. I'm still not sure who this being is yet. I know we're gonna get there, but this being teleports them to another world called Veard. And this web serial is all about them making a place for themselves, getting settled, buying a house, getting jobs, learning their magic system. Wow. This web serial, I believe, would really appeal to those of you readers who also play video games. It's just so good. I will never be able to thank my friend Star enough for putting that one on my radar. And while we're talking about sparking daily joy, I have to shout out the Advent of Winter anthology that was edited by fellow booktuber Dominish Books. The whole idea behind this anthology, and it was part of a Kickstarter, it's not available for general sale yet, but that is coming after all of the backer rewards have been issued. So keep an eye out for it. I will of course be shouting it out all over 
over the place once it's available because this is one you're going to want in your collection. Many of these stories so far have been from authors I have read and loved. I've met two new to me authors that I loved their story so much I went and bought a series by them to read. So that's going to be coming up next year. How it works right now is every day you get an email that provides you a link to that day's story. So today's short story I got was Soul Shard by Tiago Abdallah, which was my favorite one in the anthology so far, hands down. I mean, it was so good. Other authors I have read so far, Kareem Solomon has one in there. The timing was hilarious because I got his short story the day after I finished Reign of Demons. Another one was by L.L. McRae, which is one of the new to me authors that I bought a series of. The other author that was new to me was H.C. Newell and I went and got a series from her as well. And then the other two stories, one was from Cal Black who everything I've read by that author has been a five-star read and Jim Wilborn who technically is a new to me author but I feel like I know him because I've interacted with him so much. He's also a fellow content creator but I think this was the first thing that I read by him as well. All I know is I am incredibly excited to read the series of his that the first book is called The Seventh Cadence. But y'all, The Advent of Winter is chef's kiss. Dom outdid himself. It is just put together so well. I can't wait to keep going. I'm going to be sad when that one's over too. I also read a couple of stories in one that's coming out January 1st. It's edited by Richard Thomas, who is another author that I have covered many times on this channel. But this one is called The Best of Gamut or Gamut. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. From what I understand, there used to be a magazine that came out called Gamut. They are relaunching this magazine along with a teaching academy. All information that I have so far, I'm going to have down in the description box below if you want to read more or if you used to read the Gamut magazine. Hopefully you are excited. But I'm working my way through this collection. I think I've read 13 of the 15 stories. I'm going to do my best to have it completed so I can have a review up before this collection goes on sale January 1st. As far as books I'm reading, I started The Return of the Nights by Gregory Comtaxis. This is the first book in a Dance of Light series. I also have the prequel novella that was published recently for this series called The Night of the Moon. As soon as I finish this one, I am going to follow up with the novella. This one, y'all, I don't know that I have ever said this in my entire life. My preferred reading format, if I could only choose one, it would be physical. Now, I do love to immerse and read where I combine the audio with the physical, but my gosh, the audiobook for this one, I gotta be honest. I would say that is the best way to consume this story. This is one of those that is a tell, don't show type of story. And I typically don't like those very much. But in this case, the audiobook is narrated by Guy Barnes, who is an award-winning audiobook narrator and voice actor. And my goodness, does he do an amazing job with the story. He's so good at what he does that even when I'm reading it without the audiobook, I am reading it in his voice or his voices I should say because every character has their own voice. It's just amazing. And then I got one more here that I started last night. I finally got started on Nethergeist by Nick Stevenson. This book comes out next Tuesday so I have got to bust some tail, get it read and reviewed so you all will be able to make the decision if it's one you want to pick what up. What drew me to this one? What made me say yes to reviewing it to the publisher is I saw the word necromancer and a character named Emperor Goat in the book description. I love any type of story about necromancers and I was just curious about this Emperor Goat person. I love goats. I wish I could have goats. They just destroy everything which if this guy is a necromancer he destroys everything. I think he wants to wipe out what's left of humanity. That makes that name suitable for him. Hmm. Since I started it last night, I have only read the first chapter. 
That's because the chapters are extremely long, or at least chapter one was. It's 40 freaking pages long. Do y'all know how hard it is for me to sit still for that long? <laughs> Something else that I learned is Nick Stevenson has a very sophisticated writing style. There were a ton of words that I had no idea what they were. I've never seen them before. No clue what the definition was. And there were so many U's so close together that context clues completely failed me. So the writing style is a little more intricate than what I prefer. Because I was stopping to look up so many words so often, that slowed me down even more. Will it continue through the rest of the book? I'm not sure. Did the first chapter hook me? Not exactly. I did find it intriguing. I do want to know more, so I'm absolutely going to continue and I will update you all next week. Once I finish these current two reads, I already mentioned after finishing The Return of the Nights, I'm going to read the prequel novella, The Night of the Moon. Then I'm going to get into N.C. Scrimmager's Sea of Souls. It's the first book in a new fantasy series by this author. I'm very excited to get into that one. And then I will be diving into this chunker, Knife of Dreams, book 11 of the Will of Time series. I am so excited. I can't remember what happens in that one, but a couple of my friends mentioned that they really love this book. So now I am excited to rediscover it. Friends, that is everything I have gotten up to this week. All of my literary adventures. What have you been reading? Has the time of year affected your reading? Are you reading anything that's set in cold weather or holiday reads? Let me know in those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you in the next one.